I love the way Jehoshaphat prays. It's what we talked about last night, wasn't it? Prayer. When Jehoshaphat prays and he, and he lifts his voice and all the people of, Jeru of Jerusalem and Jude Judah are lifting their voices to God. And, and they're all just standing. The Bible says that they're all standing in front of the temple with their eyes on the Lord. And Jehoshaphat lifts his voice and he begins to make this incredible prayer. You should go read the prayer. And then he, he, he did like Moses last night as the intercessor, reminding God of his promises, reminding God of what he had said and the promises he had made to the children of Israel. Did you not give us this land? Did you not tell us that when we took this land that we were to bypass those particular people and not harm them? And look, God, see, see, God, look how they're rewarding us because those were the people coming against them. He was saying, now look, see, see what they're doing to reward us. Did you not promise? your friend Abraham I love that I love those intercessors who know just how to how to speak to the heart of God reminding him of what he said oh yeah. and then Jehoshaphat's famous words so God we don't know what to do and so our eyes are on you oh. and when Jehoshaphat says that the heart of God explodes back into an eruption. First, he fasted. Second, he prayed. And third is where we're going to hang our hat today. Third, he prayed until he got a word. The next thing that happens, in fact, this one's so good, I have to read it. The next thing that happens after Jehoshaphat prays, those beautiful words, we don't know what to do, so our eyes are upon you. It's like sometimes God just can't help himself. There's something sometimes that touches his heart so deep. It's like he will just explode on the scene with an answer. And that's what happens for Jehoshaphat and the people of Judea, Judah and Jerusalem. Listen to what he says. He says, immediately, Jehoshaphat prays that. And then one of the men, just one of the men in the crowd, speaks up. And he says, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid or discouraged by this great army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Then he says, tomorrow march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeril. You will not even need to fight. Take your positions, stand still, and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Oh! When you get your word. Let's pray right now. Father, I pray in this room this morning. Just this, the release of this word that it becomes rhema and life in Jesus' name. I need you to agree with me. God, release this word with rhema and life. God, bring every, I pray for every single breathing person in this room this morning. No matter how old they are, no matter who they are. Lord, make this word life to them in Jesus' name. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Fill the Holy Ghost. Jesus. There's a young man in here today. supposed to hear this. A young man. Hear this word. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You fast. You pray until. Say until. You pray until you get a word. Now, Jehoshaphat's got his word. The good thing about God oh, is... He will, he will give you a word. And not only does he give you a word for Jehoshaphat, it's like he, he gives them a promise. He tells them exactly what to do. March out against them tomorrow. You won't need to fight. Just stand still and watch the Lord. Okay. Now, next thing he does, I love this. It's like he pulls the curtain on the enemy. I love how Satan can't hide. He can't hide. God just pulls the curtain on the devil. And he says, hey, Jehoshaphat and all the people, he's over here. He's coming up through this valley right over there. He's coming up through this hill right there. Can you? He's right over there. Just totally reveals where he's at and what he's doing. Satan can't hide from you either. Come on. When your kids are going squirrely and crazy, you know what God will do? He'll just pull the curtain. You, you, they've left the house. You know where they're going? He'll just pull the curtain. They're right over here. And they're going to this house. And you need to pray and come against that right there. Right, Lauren? 
He will do that, won't he, sweetheart? Yes, he does. When she was 16. Yep, we won't even go there, will we? Thank you, Jesus. I just thought about that when I looked at you. He's just moving on, moving on. <laughs> oh, yes, he will. He will tell on the enemy to give you wisdom and strategy of how to destroy his plans. Y'all, the word of God is amazing. Once you get the word of God, that's no small thing. This is no small thing. Even you've, you, you've still not seen the circumstance changed yet. That's okay. You've got a word. Once you pray until you get a word, just pray until you get it. And if you're not hearing clearly, that's why you need to start fasting so you can hear clearly the word. The word is everything. Don't just pray for the circumstance to change. It's like I said last night. Ask God, what are you having to say about this thing? That word is your weapon in the situation you're dealing with. It's the beginning and end of all things. It's the word of God. Don't take lightly the word of God. If you, it's, it's like being able to look at him and, and you're dealing with this mess, but you can look up at the creator of the universe and say, I've got your word on it. When you look at someone, you tell them, now listen, I've got your word on it. That's supposed to mean something. No, it means something with God. Listen to me and listen clearly. The difference with God is his word this is why it's such a big deal. His word contains the very essence of who he is. His word comes out of the very nature of God himself. That's why, that's why unbelief and doubt is no small sin. Because unbelief questions the very character of God. It's not just a matter of, you know, well, just wondering if he'll keep his word or not. Oh, no, no, no. That's such a big deal. That's why even in the book of Revelation, he puts doubters in the same category as people of just catastrophic type sin. Because when you doubt the character of God, it's, it's, like, it's like how you feel when someone you deeply, deeply love, like a child, looks at you and says, I don't trust you. That's a different kind of pain. You've gone, into the, you've gone to the deepest part of who I am. You've gone into the... You've gone into the deepest part of, the, of my very character. The deal is, God is not like men that has let you down before with their words. He's not a man that he should lie. Come on. He has never lied. There's only truth in God. There is only truth in God. There's nothing else in him but truth. Jesus said, I am truth. That's all that he's made of. Truth, love, righteousness. That's who he is. That's what he speaks out of. That's why it's a big deal when you get a word from God. The other day, I thought of this this morning. I haven't thought of this in a while. I was in a... I was thinking about how, how we believe people more than we believe God. I was in a Bible study one day, actually, a precious lady. And they, they were just talking. And I was, just happened to be in a conversation listening. And they were talking about uh, someone that had gotten very critically sick. And they were, uh, had been put in the hospital and everything. And, and the ladies were all just sitting there around at the living room. And they were just talking. And somebody was telling about, you know, you so-and-so's in the hospital. They've got told what. And it's, it's you know, it's a critical condition. They're all going, oh, no. No, really. And one of them says, yes, but the doctor said it was going to be okay and she was going to make it. Oh, oh, praise God. Oh. And I was just thinking, I wish we believed God's word like that. If you hear something that happens to somebody, if that had just said, but God said that according to his word, she is healed. 
And then they're all going, oh, yeah. Oh. You know what I'm saying? No, we believe people more than we believe God. We believe a doctor's report more than we believe what his word has said. God, help us believe the true word of God. Come on. Let his word be that real in us. Do we believe his word more than anybody else's word? That his word trumps it all, every other word. Shout amen. When you get God's word, you've got the final answer.